right, welcome to chapter 13. Yeah? This clip is about chapter 13. Let's continue. Uh, this chapter is about risk and return, yeah? or return and risk. Okay. Uh, let's continue with uh, the slide. Okay. Um, in this uh, chapter, we are going to look at uh, four yeah? key concepts. The first part is to look at how to calculate the expected return. Okay, so the first key concept has uh, a few terms yeah, like uh, expected return, variance, and standard deviation. These are all terms referring to returns. Yeah, expected return, variance of returns, and standard deviation of returns. Okay, so this will be the first part, yeah, first key concept. Now the second key concept is to do with portfolio. Yeah, here we look at single assets, the first part, and the second part we look at collection of assets we call that portfolio yeah? and then uh, when we have a collection of assets usually investors invest in more than one assets at uh, one time yeah? simultaneously therefore portfolio is very important yeah? so this portfolio will have an impact on uh, uh, the risk yeah? of the portfolio yeah? risk of the investment so we call this diversification. So we look at the concept of diversification. This is the second key concept. Okay, so we look at uh, portfolio and the impact of the portfolio will be diversification of risk. Yeah? When we say diversification, we mean diversification of risk. All right, so that would be the uh, second key concept. And the third would be uh, to look at the systematic risk principle. Yeah? So this is an important principle. So here we look at uh, the uh, outcome of diversification. We find that uh, there's something called systematic risk. Yeah? And this systematic risk is relevant. Okay, And when there is more systematic risk, there must be compensation, more compensation yeah? or more return. Yeah? And therefore, this is called the systematic risk principle. We look at this. Yeah? This is the third key concept. Then finally, at the end, we look at the security market line uh, and the risk return trade off. Yeah? Or we call this the capital asset pricing model. Yeah? We uh, represent the security market line uh, in a mathematical formula or mathematical model. We call that the capital asset pricing model, which is a very famous model yeah, in finance. Okay, so this, these are the four key concepts in this chapter. Yeah? So we look at them. Uh, in turn, yeah. okay. This I'm going to skip, okay, because it basically explain explains the key concepts. Yeah, so you can look through this on your own. Now, the first part we look at return and risk, yeah, of a single asset. That means asset here means securities, yeah. Uh, asset or security is the same thing. We call this when we say asset, we mean financial asset, yeah, not real assets, financial assets. Okay, for for example, stocks, bonds. Okay, uh, short-term securities and all that come under asset here, yeah, single. When we invest in one single asset at one time, then this is relevant, yeah, single asset. Okay, single asset is opposed to portfolio of assets. Yeah? Portfolio means you don't invest in a single asset, you invest in many assets at the same time. Okay, let's continue, yeah. Now, what do we mean by expected return of an asset? Yeah, the expected return are based on the probabilities of possible outcomes. Yeah? So this is actually a technical term. Yeah? When we say expected return, okay, what do we mean by return? Yeah? Return first is excess gain over the investment. Yeah? And normally it's reported for one year. Okay, remember the interest rate that we saw in chapter 5 and chapter 6 in time value of money? Now that interest rate is actually expected return. Yeah? Or the return. Yeah? Not necessarily expected return, but it is return, yeah? excess gain. Yeah? This includes interest. Yeah? You invest or you deposit some money, that's called investment, and then you get some gain, you get interest. Yeah? Gain here can be interest or any other gain, yeah? profit, for example. Let me just get the pointer, yeah? one moment. All right, yeah? so you get this uh, gain. This gain can be in terms of interest or profit or whatever. Yeah? What do you get in excess? from your investment in one year. Return is normally yeah, normally reported for one year. It is given in percentage terms, yeah, return. So what do we mean by expected return? Yeah? This expected return are based on 
a few key concepts yeah, here. Yeah? This is one concept or one term, then we have other terms. Yeah? For example, probabilities. Then we have possible, okay, and then outcomes. Yeah? So it has a few other terms yeah, that you need to understand. Yeah? So in this context, expected means average in the uh, if the process is repeated many times. Yeah? So if you invest in, an, uh, in a project or an investment, and then if you can repeat this process, yeah, this investment many times, which is not possible, but uh, we assume that you can, yeah? then the return, the expected return will be the average return you get if you invest this um, uh, many times over. Okay, That's the idea behind expected return. Yeah? Alright, so the expected return does not even have to be a possible return. So this is the formula. Yeah? We'll come to this possible return a bit later. Yeah? We look at this is the formula for expected return. Yeah? The book uses this E for expected, capital E, yeah? and then this R, they use capital R. I prefer using small r with a hat. Yeah? I'll show you the formula a bit later. There is the same thing, all right? This is expected return. Now, this is expected return, yeah? and then you uh, there are three other elements here. Yeah? Okay, three other elements. What are the elements? The first one is this is what we mean by possible return. Okay, this uh, ri okay, is possible return. This r without i is the return. And then when you put act, uh, e here, sorry, then this becomes expected return. All right, and yeah? then this, uh, this expected return depends on this element, which is possible return, okay, ri. And i is possibilities or scenarios, yeah? This will depend on the scenario or possibility. We call this possibility or possibilities. So in this case, there are n possibilities. Yeah? I repre represents the possibilities. And here, n means there are n types of possibilities or n categories of possibilities. Yeah? From 1 to n. Yeah? This symbol, as you have learned in statistics, yeah, is called summation symbol. Summation. Yeah? So this is actually a sum of products. Yeah? You Product means you multiply yeah, two elements. Okay, so you multiply R with P. Yeah, but what is P here? PI is the probability of the possibility. What is the probability of this scenario or this possibility occurring? Yeah, so um, there are uh, several terms yeah, that you need to understand. Yeah? So here, expected return is based on these three elements. Yeah? These three elements are crucial yeah, to determining the expected return. Yeah? No, so this expected return may not be the possible return here. Yeah? This may not be equal to this because this you multiply with the probability yeah? and then you sum. So this is called a product. P multiplied by R is called a product. Then you sum yeah? okay, because you have several possibilities. Okay, Then you sum them, then you get the expected return and yeah, this becomes clearer when we look at an example yeah okay so this expected return is the return the average return yeah or the uh, return that you expect you anticipate to obtain or to get if the investment process is repeated many times okay so this is an important uh, concept to understand yeah all right let's look at an example and we apply yeah? then this will become very clear Okay, the expected return. How do you compute the expected return for these stocks? Yeah? There are two stocks here, stock C and stock C. Sorry, stock C and stock T. Yeah? Okay, and there are three possible states. Yeah? This is called the possibility. You can also call this the state or states, yeah? various states. Okay, the economy can be in a boom. The state uh, refers to the economy. Yeah? Now, it can boom. It can be normal growth or it can be recession. Yeah, okay, like what we are anticipating now. Yeah, and during this MCO and post MCO for COVID nineteen. Okay, we are expecting recession. Yeah, for the next uh, one year or one and a half years or maybe two years or more. Yeah, right. So this is recession. Yeah. So there are three possibilities. These are called possibilities. Yeah, or three categories of possible outcomes. Yeah, and uh, so. You can see here, this is called possibilities, and this refers to the symbol I that we saw in the formula just now. Yeah? So I refers uh, ranges from 1 
2 and 3. Yeah? So n is 3. There are 3 possible outcomes. Is that okay? Now the second column is probability. Probability here refers to the chance of this possibility occurring. Yeah? So here it means uh, 0.3 means 30%. Yeah? Usually probability is given in percentage terms. Yeah? But you can also give this in or you can state this in decimal. Yeah? Now here the probability of a normal growth in the economy is 50% or 0.5. And what is the probability of recession? Okay, it must be 0.2. Why is this 0.2? Because when you sum the probability, okay, it must be equal to 1. Yeah? Because this must be exhaustive. Yeah? Mutually ex exhaustive. Okay, uh, I mean collectively exhaustive and mutually exclusive. Yeah? That's these two terms in statistics. Uh, that's very important. Yeah, those are very important. That means if you have a boom, you cannot have a normal. Yeah? That's called mutually exclusive. Yeah. When you have recession, you cannot have normal, you cannot have boom. Yeah? So they are exclusive. Yeah? So the uh, possibilities must be mutually exclusive and the probabilities of the possibilities must be collectively exhaustive. Meaning that the total yeah, of all the probabilities must always be 1 or 100%. It cannot be less or cannot be more. Yeah? Alright, so this is... Because it's 30%, this is 50%, this must be 20% because there are only three possibilities. Yeah? The on, only possibility left must be the total probability yeah? or the remaining probability. So there is 30% chance that there will be a boom, 50% chance there will be a normal growth in the economy, and then uh, there will be a 20% chance that there will be a recession. And that's how you integrate this. So these two columns are important. Now, the third and the fourth column, okay, these are possible returns. These are RI. Yeah? I prefer to use a small R yeah, rather than the big R. Yeah? I use a small R here, R with, with I. Yeah? So, this is the possible return given I, given boom, yeah? given normal, given recession. Okay, like, let's look at this stock C. Yeah? It is important to understand how you interpret the table. If you interpret the table correctly, then you can get the computation yeah, correctly. The calculation will be correct. If you interpret the table wrongly, then you are uh, most likely going to get the answer wrong. Yeah? Now, let's look at this. Yeah? This is stock C. Okay, and if there is a boom in the economy, which is a 30% chance, the stock will give you a 15% return. And this is 0 0.15. This is expressed in decimal. But usually, yeah, the return will be expressed in percentage, yeah, 15%. If it is normal, then stock C will have a 10% return. Okay, of course, when the economy booms, you get 15%. Yeah? If it's normal, you get slightly lower, 10%. And if it's in recession, you still get some return, but the return is very low, yeah, 2% for stock C. Is that, is that clear? That's how you interpret this stock C's possible returns, yeah? Now we look at the possible returns for stock T, yeah, which is similar to C. The only difference is that uh, if there is a boom, the stock T's return will be 25%. If there is a normal growth in the economy, stock T's return will be 20%. And if there is a recession, stock T's return will be 1%. Yeah? So similar, but this one will be higher if there is a boom or normal growth. But it will be lower than stock C if there is a recession. And so that's how you integrate this table. Now the question is how do you compute the expected return for stock C? And how do you compute the expected return for stock T? Alright, so we apply the formula. This is the formula here. This is the uh, expected return for stock C yeah, using the formula. And this is the expected return for stock T yeah, using the formula. But let's look at the formula in greater detail. Yeah? Okay. Now the convention, yeah, that's, uh, we are coming to the end of this clip yeah, because this is 15 minutes. Okay, But uh, we will continue in the next clip. Let's look through this. Yeah? The convention, when you, com uh, when you compute, the convention is the probability, you use decimal, the 0.3, even though this is given in percentage. You write this as decimal, yeah? but the return you use percentage. Yeah, you don't use decimal here. Even though it's given as decimal, you use percentage. Yeah, that is the convention. Yeah, so this is how you get the expected return for the two stocks.